Are you a VLOOKUP user? If yes, this video is a must watch for you because you can do a lot of advanced stuff which VLOOKUP can't and Excel's filter function can. So in this video, I'll talk about the basics of filter function. I will show you how you can do some things with filter function which VLOOKUP cannot and various other use cases which will help you do your data analysis better. It might be a long video, so be there, hang on, and let's learn some new powerful stuff. First, let me talk about the data that you're going to work on. So I have around 15 rows of data. It contains name of employees, the date of joining, the division that they work in, the salary, rating, and age. Now I have already copied and pasted the headings in the same format on the right hand side. Now let's say I want to filter all the employees who have the division CDFD. Normally you go to data, you apply this physical filter and then from the drop down you choose CDFD and maybe thereafter you copy and paste this data somewhere else. Now let me not do this, let me clear the filter remove it and then let me show you how filter function works. Let me optimize the window so that I can maximize my screen and allow you to see in a full fledged format what is filter. Now filter has three parameters. First it asks you where is your data's array. Now I'm choosing this but Remind yourself that in case you want a dynamic selection, you may want to convert this data set into a table format by pressing Ctrl T first and then applying filter function. Right now, let me continue with this selected array. Next, it says what do you want to include? That means what is your criteria for filtering the data? In that case, I choose this particular column's values and I will equate each of these values to the value of CDFD. Now there is a third parameter, I'm not using it right now and I'm closing the parenthesis right away to press enter. So you'll notice I've got all the names that has CDFD mentioned against its division. Now suppose this cell that I'm referring to that contains CDFD contains a value let's say NA or any value which is not supposed to be found in this table. If you do that, it throws an error that, hey, I'm not able to figure out the criteria. So normally you apply if error function to suppress this error. However, in filter function, you have the inbuilt parameter where you can put a message saying, hey, not found. In double quotes, close the parenthesis, enter. So this is inbuilt if error to allow you to give a message just in case things go wrong. Now this was a very simple use case of filter. Let me return back to CDFD value. Now you may want to add more criteria. For example, all the records which has CDFD division mentioned and where the age is more than equal to 30. So it's an and condition. It must be CDFD and the age should be more than or equal to 30. In that case, let me show you how can I include a dual condition in place of one condition. So I put the existing condition in a pair of parentheses. I put a multiplication sign and I introduced another pair of parentheses, which means if you have multiple criteria, you can put criteria number one, then you can put the asterisk sign and then put the second criteria. So my second criteria is going to be all these values, which is talking about age must be greater than or equal to 30, which is mentioned in one of the cells above. And I press enter. So you notice my records have reduced because I'm only picking up those values which have division CDFD and age more than or equal to 30. Now you might ask me if this was the method to include and condition, what could be a method to include or condition? That means either CDFD division or 30. So if I replace this asterisk with a plus sign, it means or. When I press enter, you will see all the values coming up one by one. It either must be CDFD division or the age must be greater than or equal to 30. 
Now, why do I say that all VLOOKUP users must start using the filter function? If you go back one step where I just spoke about one criteria, that is CDFD. It gave me all the records that has CDFD. But imagine if you had to do a VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, look for CDFD, comma, and then look up for the entire data. Now, remember that if you're using VLOOKUP, you must include that first column which has the division. You cannot choose the table array whose first column is not the division. So that's a problem. And then you would say, hey, after doing so, I'll choose the column index number one, two, or three or four. You can't choose the column values from the left hand side. Let's say I choose column two. From these four selected columns, I'm choosing column two and giving zero or false for exact match. So you see, VLOOKUP will always look for the first instance of CDFD. It will not look over to the other instances that are repeating in the data set. Plus, it can give you as an answer only one column at a time. So that is what makes it powerful. Now you might ask me, hey, what if I do not want records of all the data? I want only two column or maybe three columns data. What do I do in that case? So that is where I'll start showing you a slightly more advanced use case of filter. So first, let me show you the basics and then I'll combine two functions. Suppose I choose filter. I choose the entire array. For now, for example, sake, I'm just using three columns. Now in curly braces, I'm putting one, zero, one in sequence with a comma in between and closing the pair of curly braces. So indirectly, I'm telling this function out of the three columns, please only include the first and the third, because for the second, I have given a zero, which indicates do not include this column in my final answer. When I press enter, see, I'm only getting values from the first and the third column. Now imagine if I can have this feature with my filter function, which will allow me to get only restricted columns, which I need, not all of them. So let's say I just need employee ID, maybe age, that's it. So I go to filter. First, I choose the entire array, comma. Then I have my basic criteria in place, which means look only for the values which has CDFD in its value. Let me test this first. Yeah, works fine. Now from here, I add another filter function. Okay. That's the trick. Another filter function. Now this is the array. This refers to the revised array of five records that you can see right now. And from those five records, I want only two columns as an answer. So let me show you if I put curly braces and say one comma one, and thereafter I'm putting five times zero, zero, five times. Why five times? Because the total number of columns are seven and those seven are addressed using these Boolean values of one and zeros, indicating I only want the first two. When I press enter, see, that's what I get. So very, very powerful function you can use to add multiple criteria. You can use it to show values for duplicate IDs. You can also restrict the number of columns to maybe two or three out of the entire hundreds of columns that you're dealing with. Now, this is not all. I want to show you one super, super use case of filter function where I'll include the concept or rather the use case of a seemingly wildcard character in the filter formula. For example, I wish to list all the names which may contain the letter AB or let's say IN. Fine. So right now I'm writing, let's say AB and then I wish to include all those names that contain AB. Right now you go to filter and do it with a physical filter. You say, hey, why don't you give me those values that contain AB? Enter, right? This is how you do it. So let me remove the filter and show you how can you do this using filter function. Let me go back to filter function. I choose this entire array. And let me remind you again that yes, you can convert this data set into a table using the shortcut key control T. 
The advantage would be just in case you have extra records coming into the future that would be automatically updated and considered in your filters formula outcome. Right now, let me continue with this structure. So after choosing the entire data sets array, I proceed. And here is where I wish to add a criteria where I'm checking whether this AB is anywhere to be found in any of the names. Now to be able to help you understand that better, let me just go back one step and show you the feature of search formula. Search for AB and let's say I'm choosing one random value. Uh, let's say Sheila, enter. It gives me a value error because there is no letter AB. But if there were any letter AB, it will tell you the starting position, starting position of that letter AB, that is 17. So indirectly, it means if you're getting a number, there must be AB in the data. If you are getting an error, you are not getting AB anywhere in that data. So what I'm going to do is in this filter function, after choosing the array, I will include the combination of is number and search formula. So I'm asking, Hey, how many of your checks are going to be a number and who is the check? The check is the search formula. So as per search formula, I must choose what am I searching for? AB. Great. Where am I searching for in these values? Correct. Now for every instance, it will search for that value. And let me show you by pressing F nine, if I can. That look, wherever it found AB, it gave you the starting position of that AB for everybody else. I'm getting value error. Now let me press control Z. The idea of this formula was to show you that why are we using this function of is number with search. So search will have the ability to find and locate the position number if AB exists. If it doesn't, it gives you an error. Now to all those checks, if you ask, Hey, are you a number multiple times, you will get a series of trues and false. So let me press F nine once again. See, so you'll find false, 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 but it'll find true whenever it feels there is a letter AB and it's the record which I would want to include in my final filter answer. So this combination, once I close the bracket, I press enter and now you see I'm getting only those names which have AB. Now let me try with something else. Let's say AT. Aha. See, AT is somewhere in the middle of the data and it's being considered. Now this is very, very useful when you are having a column of lay address and you're looking for a particular street. It may be at the beginning of the data. It may be in the middle of the data. Similarly, a lot of time when you work with data, you get something like asset description or let's say uh, transaction description. What you're looking for may not be exactly stored at the beginning of the data. It may be in the middle of the data. So it's a very, very nice way to filter out those data sets that meet your criteria of a string that contains inside a particular value of a particular column. So friends, if you just recollect, what did we discuss? We saw the basics of the filter function, how to add criteria. We saw how can you use double filter function using curly braces one and zero to exclude certain columns and keep certain columns. This function has an inbuilt if error that can help you suppress the error and give a custom message. We also saw that VLOOKUP cannot look for duplicate IDs and give you the answer for which filter is perfect. We saw that if you want to include two criteria with AND condition, condition A and condition B, you'll have to use the asterisk sign. And if you want to use OR function, then plus is what you'll be using. One of the very, very important use case is to look for a particular string of character. And that's where we use is number and search. Quick tip, you can convert the data set into a table and the advantage is anytime you have, let's say new records coming in after that will automatically be included. Let me show you a quick demo. I press control T convert this into a table. Now, when you write any filter function and choose the array, 
it's the reference of the table that is being written which means if there are any new records later let's say ad and some number coming in that will also be included in your final outcome so quick tip there just in case you want to find out the last entry in your data set you can use the max function to find out the last date in your data and use this as your criteria to list all the records which has this date so friends do let me know in the comment section if all these concepts were clear to you and you think some of which you can use in your office work